turn, but you can roll whenever you like. And we're going to come up on you? Yeah, c come up on, on this camera. Yeah. Okay, we're rolling. Okay. I'll count myself in. Thanks. Crazy right wing at the first point. You know, so, so, I mean, this is a serious war because, yes. I mean, Wellstone is another example. Yeah. I mean, so this, this, this is the same, folks, this is the same body. What, what, what this man is, is speaking of, your indication of media collusion and high-level conspiracy. When they can take a candidate who was very, po was very popular, Cynthia McKinney, very, very popular, and uh, she had the uh, 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 position in Congress where there, when there were hearings, uh, I don't know if everybody remembers the hearings where yeah. Donald Rumsfeld and Richard Myers had to appear before a panel. And so she had a position where she took part in that panel, and that's when she confronted uh, Donald Rumsfeld, asking him about the, uh, the what was it, 1.8 2.2 trillion dollars missing from the Pentagon budget, which was reported on September 10th, 2001. Mm -hmm. And in this, here you can see in the video, Donald Rumsfeld starts doing this. He starts fidgeting and ask, and then he turns to Richard Myers. And, uh, you know, then he wanted to, you know, come back and say, you know, I, I have to get back to you on this. Yeah. And, and furthermore, what, he, what, what she asked him about was uh, this company, DynCor, that was known to um, have engaged overseas in, you know, one of these third world countries in uh, sex trade, you know, for its, its uh, uh, I would say, mercenaries or, or hired uh, contractors. Very, very illegal activity, immoral activity from DynCorp. And so she confronted him. So she, she was a popular, courageous woman. And look what they were able to do to her. And look what they were able to do to John Wellstone. Look what were they able to Paul do. Wellstone. I'm sorry, Paul Wellstone. Um, they did to another two senators who spoke out on 9-11, which is Mark Dayton. I'm seeing, sorry, Congressman. Nice. Mark Dayton. Dayton held a hearing in which he basically said NORAD lied to the 9-11 Commission about the, 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 the timeline of the, uh, the four flights. He did it very eloquently, and uh, he's gone. Okay, I think he, was, he and his staff uh, received some threatening phone calls, letters, or information, and uh, what I heard, I, I think, from reliable sources is that after... Uh, the, this uh, set of warnings, they, they left their offices. Okay, it was uh, pretty, pretty intense. And then another senator who's gone, uh, or congressman, I'm sorry, is uh, Kurt Weldon, Republican from Pennsylvania, who was the champion of two whistleblowers from Able Danger, uh, Anthony Schaefer and uh, Phil, uh, Scott Philpott. And he was able to pull together 242 congressmen to sign a petition to have openly held hearings about the Sable Danger Program. So, and he, he's been in for several terms, and all of a sudden, this last campaign season, they dig out some scandal, you know, mm -hmm. they, they create a scandal about some uh, real estate deals, and also his daughter having some... Uh, uh, some, some business contracts, you know, they, they basically smeared them mm -hmm. because of uh, speaking on 9-11. So there, there's four right there, and uh, I, I just look at that and say, here's, here's the reality behind it. Now, wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We got to talk about uh, February 11th. Okay, let's spend some time on that. February 11th, it's, a, it's on a Sunday, it's going to be... Five years, six months. Five months. Five years, five months. You sure? Okay. Uh, so that afternoon, it's going to be beautiful weather, and we got to. Okay. So street action. About like three o'clock, Union Square. All right, and. If, Let's, let's just say 3 o'clock street action. What we should do is, is get at least two locations happening for, for that Sunday. All right? Uh, in that evening, uh, 
we could do several things, uh, including showing film, folks. How about this? We have a, a special program where if anybody brings somebody new for that night, um, they get three stickers, or, you know, bumper stickers or buttons free. Okay, and a uh, little incentive there. They're, they're kind of cool. People love these stickers and bumper stickers. Uh, we have a, a lot of good ones. And uh, so a little incentive to bring somebody new for that night. And uh, anybody else, would they like to see anything special, for any uh, special speakers? We've been talking less about, um, just, just to go ahead up you guys, about doing something on the 11th of each month. Now, especially yep. coming towards the sixth anniversary, yep. um, trying to get that out to the rest of the country. Yep. You know, um, that's why the guy from Above Top Secret, uh, Bill. Uh, we were talking about that at the meeting two weeks ago. So hopefully uh, we can arrange that. But you guys uh, talk to anybody else, any of the activists, any other part of the country. You know, try to pump up this thing uh, that every 11th we want to do something in every city in, in the country. You know, it, it's just a matter of making a poster about 9/11 was an inside job, going outside city hall. You know, but uh, we're going to try to pump this up for uh, for this, the February 11th, and for each each single 11th after that. What time is February 11th? Three o'clock. Where? Right across from uh, what is it? Whole Foods. Union Square. Union Square. Okay. We're all set. And uh, it's very important, folks. What do we want? What do we want after? Five years, five months. We, we, independent investigation. Independent investigation, right. <laughs> now, by the way, I want, to, I want to tell you, at this media reform conference, that was an easy sell, an independent investigation. People were saying, you know, of course, of course, there are questions that must be asked. Even a few people that I spoke to who were, like, resistant to... Uh, admitting or, or even considering that 9-11 uh, was a state-sponsored false flag terror event. There was a few people like that, like that, like, she got, yeah, and basically they haven't considered, have not spent the time after five years, many, many people within the media, even within the alternative media and within the uh, progressive movement, have not spent the time to look at the evidence, you know? So how about this? For February 11th, we're going to do a call out for the alternative media to take the time to, to view the evidence, to say, you know, too much time has passed. If you have not viewed this evidence that we have proven complicity, orchestration, 9-11 uh, is in a string of events. If you have not taken the time yet, here's what you need to do. We'll, 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 we'll give them... Uh, you know, three DVDs to watch. 9-11 Press for Truth, 9-11 Mysteries, Terror Storm. Okay? Another thing I'd like to see us do is come together on an, uh, an effort to give the information to the NYPD. Okay? Tom's been working on that. And, uh, uh, give them give, NYPD information on 9-11. We have a, a cop who was, he's, he was a first responder. His name is Craig Bartmer, and we have a, an interview with him. And, you know, it's, it's great. He's, he's, he is one of them, one of the men in blue who, after 9-11, responded and uh, had a horrendous experience health-wise and mentally, and he's one of these first responders who uh, has really, really become sick and really uh, victimized by the failure of, of uh, the city agencies and federal agencies to take care of our people who, whose role and responsibility is to come to our rescue. So he's one of them, and uh, he's NYPD, and he's very, very intelligent and knowledgeable about what 9-11 was really about. So we have him on uh, DVD, and his name is Craig Bartmer. And uh, so what we're working to do is give DVDs of, of uh, his interview to NYPD. So we'll have a batch, and I think that's a good initiative. Yeah, he said he was making a couple. One with uh, 
Craig Barker and Nelson Dyson of the Mysteries after that, mm -hmm. Nolan Craig Barker and um, Press the Truth after that. So I, I, we should give them to every cop in Manhattan, right. you know, or Brooklyn or whatever, because yep. you guys, you know, nobody wants to talk to the cops. Try it. Just try it. Talk to a couple of cops once in a while. Tell them a little bit about, about what you think about 9-11. Try it. Talk to 10 cops. Three of them will agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. About Lily Rodriguez. Yeah. Lily Rodriguez for DVD? Sure. Sure. Um, we should show that one soon as well. And, um, you know, it's, it's good to just carry material with you. You never know when you're going to run into something. I was, you know, picking up, take out Chinese food, and the cop comes in, you know, and I say, hey, you know, uh, I really got something I want you to see. You know, and he's like, oh, cool. Thank you very much, you know. You can sympathize with them. Yeah. Yeah. They only make twenty-five thousand a year. You know, too, it, it, when when we're when we have an opportunity to speak to a policeman and say, look, you know, uh, you lost a lot of your brothers on 9/11. You lost a lot of your brothers, and that immediately connects with them. And, and that, this is why I want you to look at this material, because there's so much that has not been reported. There's so much that has been covered up. You, we need to get the truth. Of and they relate. They'll relate. Dr. Michelle? I just want to say that the reason we don't reach the police is that we don't succeed in uh, impeaching this criminal. We're going to have a police state, a fascist state, and we want the police to be on our side. We want the police to be able to turn against the government and be on our side. That's why we need to be aggressive about being informing them right of the strategy. Good point. I'm saying that it should be indictment, not impeachment. Impeachment is for the president. And if he got it in by vote fraud, by vote fraud, everything he's done is criminal, and we can indict him for everything he's done. The Patriot Act, which takes rights away, uh, the corporation, the corporate funding of outsourcing of jobs. These are things a criminal would do. These things destroy America, destroy the Constitution, destroy the economy. It's thrown the United the States into. Of the it's thrown the United States into. Uh, it's thrown the United States into. Uh, it's like 700 to 1,000 years of debt. And how America's going to pay that off, I really don't know. It's, it's just ridiculous. He's robbing America. And his corporate backers of the military industrial complex are robbing and conquering America through these activities. So he can pay for his 100,000 acres in Paraguay. Does everyone know that the Bush family bought 100,000 acres in Paraguay? They're all the natural gas and water resources. Let's send them there right away. Yes, recently. It's happened in October. There's an article you can find online. UK Guardian wrote an article on it. There's a number of bloggers that have written about it. As far as uh, indictment, if you remember, Spiro Agnew was vice president, and he was indicted again okay, and impeached. So we could go after Cheney and the indictments of the criminal acts that he performed will lead to his impeachment. So we need to do that first, just like Spiro Agnew went first, and then Nixon had to be his I don't recognize him as president. I saw the vote being fraudulent myself. According to a panel, a big event at the town hall last year, with, and this was all about articles in, of impeachment. Uh, I'll tell you who was on the panel. Uh, John Dean, right, Watergate. Liz Holtzman, she was a Watergate prosecutor. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, also, Sam Cedar of Aramaic Radio. Uh, John Conyers. And, uh, oh, the attorney, Michael Ratner, right? uh, Center for Constitutional Rights. So this whole discussion happened. Raising issues such as torture, this is grounds for impeachment. The uh, warrantless wiretaps, these are grounds for impeachment. And the, uh, the Iraq war, or the lies of Iraq, these are what they were discussing. And what came up in the conversation, I'm just sharing, because we're talking about procedural issues of indictment versus impeachment. And what, what they specified is, first, before you can indict a sitting president, 
He's got to be impeached. So, yeah, that's what they said. That's what they said. So now my question is, what if they commit treason? If, yes, they already have. So if even, but you know, this is the, the weird thing about our government is, is that that there's this office of presidency. It's the office of the presidency. That you're representing the government. You're representing Steve Jones. You're representing Grancia. You're representing Los Huecos. Now you're allowed to lose. I'm not talking about I don't care about Larouche. But Larouche is actually why not represented here. Grancia or S CIA. That's same as represent well, other government. Represent what? Represent by you. Represent what? Yeah. You you covering up exotic weaponry? Well, I've heard of the FBI speaking before. Dave <laughs> Ray Griffin, Rockefeller Associate, One World Who Government, you you're supporting for? them. You're covering up nine TV fakery, and you're covering up exotic weaponry, and you're covering up an ongoing war between China, Russia, and US on killer satellite Star Wars. It happened this week in China on behalf of technology of James Baker. You're sitting here, and you support him for World War Four Five. Who do you work for? I work for myself. You're wacko because you're a Laotian. No, you're FBI. Oh, FBI, I shine and prove it, you fucking moron. That's nice. Can we take turns? It's the only language you understand. Fuck How about a little order? You have a response? Okay. Oh. You have a response? Let's see what happened in Memphis, huh? What will happen in... I guess not. Responsible Jones you, you have your point. Yeah, you have your chance to talk. Where's the answer? You have your chance to talk. Why are you covering up exotic weaponry, the evidence of exotic weaponry in the use of 9, at the news of 9-11? Why are you covering up... Yes, it exists. I'll tell you what. If you, if you think we can put that through to the, the general public and to Congress, city council... Well, just fight in your Let him finish. Let him finish. Let him finish. What were you going to say? If, if, if you, Nico, or anybody else thinks that exotic weaponry is a lead-in to convince the public and to get action done for, for justice for 9-11, go with Nico. No go out there. Don't vote me. Just go out there. No one should become a leader. Just go. Just go. Just go. Out there and convince the public. That's on Wikipedia. Direct <laughs> energy weapons, you're not thrown. I don't need to convince the people, it's already up on the internet. Well, what are you doing? China, test it right now. We Star Wars weaponry. We don't understand your words. New York Post. Yeah, you understand you someone who's talking bullshit, I know. You understand someone who's talking bullshit. He says, We don't understand you. This is a talking bullshit. And this is he is his Urantia. It's a front for the OSS and CIA NSA since the 50s. And he will not step back because he's bullshitting you. And who are you? I'm Nico Hawk. I'm not a leader. I don't want to be called a leader for a shit house. We need to work together. Let's, let's no, I don't want to work together with this guy here who's standing here. Then why are you here? Goodbye. Freedom of speech, black lady. Freedom of speech. You can have your speech and your freedom too. If you go with him, you will run into World War 4 5. That's what he's doing. We need to work together. You all have to work together. In Arizona, we vote better. Take it easy. Take it easy. Go back to Google. Now go you back to Google. Yeah, that's the picture. Google, Kyle Hey, Nico. Good points together. All have good points. Hey, Nico. How much information do you have on exotic weapons? Wikipedia.org. Jonas Sohn is a technology developer, HSV, Raytheon. China has exotic weaponry. Russia might have also as much as confirmed yet. U.S. has definitely exotic weaponry. Well, what, what's your point? Are you saying that exotic weaponry was used to bring down the towers? Yes, it's pretty clear. Okay, I mean, is that, is that substantiated, or is that just somebody's idea? Substantiated by the evidence that you cannot pulverize a building of thermite, because Jones is pushing a hangout because he developed exotic weaponry. He was on cold fusion, he was on uh, uh, zonal luminescence, and he probably has other tests of them. He betrayed the United States in 1989 by stopping a, a cold fusion free energy project. He worked for the, uh, for, for the Los Alamos department. He worked for the Department of Energy, and he knows it, and he's with a cult who's infiltrated with, with CIA, OSS, NSA since the 50s. Nico, Nico. And it's not religious freedom of speech, because you're representing a front which also infiltrated and I'm truth or. No and you can look up my facts, because it's a fact. I'm not making this up. I'm not working for any fucking government. Nico. Now, will you let him respond and be quiet for a while? Nico, look, you did a presentation here on the, on the no planes thing. Okay. Well, that's here. Now, we, had a, we had a good crowd, place. and the people were respectful of you. Okay. Fine. Wait until 2006, and you, uh, at the end of the year, and you will have World War with China and Russia. You wait until 2008, you have Hillary Clinton fascism. Nico, here's my point. You got through that whole presentation, being a gentleman, 
Okay. Shavis is still here. That's the only All troublemaker right. right now. Wait, He's representing so the fucking finish, government please. front. Nick, you want to finish? If you get 15 minutes or 20 minutes on a Sunday night here to actually put something together about exotic weaponry no, and have that... Well, that's Shavis and you and, and Thomas talk. I want to have 15 minutes against Les Jameson. Huh. Yeah, and Brian Balipsos, who you still meet every week, at hey, least on the phone. It's an alternative view. This is insanity. No, it's a fact. Tell him that you still make websites for Urantia. Tell him that you support your true story. You said Bin Laden was behind 9-11 in front of Urantia. Take it easy. Take it easy. He... Nico, most of the people here don't know what your ranch you is. You said we put up the website this week. Your signature's in it, Bin Laden, Behind 9 11. You ranch your last James from 2004. We had the website up. Tom said, tell him that the website was circulating with his signature. Wait, wait a second, you guys, look. Les and I have been disagreeing about a lot of stuff about the movement. Fine, okay? I'm never going to accuse Les of... Espionage or anything like that, you know. It's not um, okay. But. No, but. Not tell him that you work with your rancher. Tell him that you supported your rancher until at least 2004. What do you mean supported your rancher? You were at your rancher meeting. Tell him. Wait, tell him that you lied to this list. Wait, wait, wait. Let me moderate here a little bit. Okay. For money, for you guys that don't know what your rancher is, all right? Your rancher is a religion. It took hold in the 50s. It's less his religion, took hold in the 50s. And um, I don't know too much about it unless you say it's for world peace. Okay. All right. There, there's a little bit of... There's a little bit of questions about a lot of different religions. Okay. There was questions raised about there's an NSA member who's a trustee, who was a trustee of your rancher. Now, does that invite the whole religion? I don't know. I don't think so. You, you can't just say because there's an NSA member on the uh, board of your rancher, I'm sorry, sorry, the trustee of your rancher, that your rancher is no good or that less is no good. All right? But I think these questions have come about because of that. You know, we have been having a dialogue in the past few weeks, trying to discuss this, trying to communicate, trying to get to the bottom of it. Now, Nico, I'm saying it. If you have evidence, Evidence, substantiated evidence. Wow. I'm sorry. I'll give you that. Okay. If you have evidence that links less to some kind of subversive group that's undermining our organization here, I'm sure we'd all welcome it. Hey, look, I'm not asked. Okay, but if it's name calling, we don't like that. I'm not name calling. If you have evidence, you're still you meeting with your range of people. If you have evidence that he's still meeting with your range of people when he denied it, then email oh, he's lying. He's reading his Brian Belitzel, who is Brian Belitzel, who is your answer, which is not true. Okay. Okay. okay, this is what you call a witch hunt. Right. All right. No, this is what you call greater pro revelation. Oh, wait a second. I'm going to say something. I'm going to see a philosophical society. Not a religion. It was created by Tavis Stock and the Nazis. It's a little bit stuff like that. It's a very thick book. It's just thick. Oh, so you oh, you're with Urantia. Here we have another part of it. There's yes, another Urantia member right now. Shhh! Why are you lying, puppy? Shhh! 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 Anyway, it's all your Urantia signs. Tom, Tom. Shhh! 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 Hi, I'd, I'd like to just say that it's been, we've observed the past 15 minutes where Nico has been very rude and interrupted this whole meeting where everyone has had their time in, to speak. And he has been proven to be uh, very uh, uh, vociferous and rude with his theories about there's no planes and that thing. So we'd a priest, you've been asked not to speak or at least keep your voice down because there's a play upstairs. So be respectful. Now, you have monopolized the last 15 minutes with accusations that are unfair to Les, oh, who we all respect, because regardless if he goes, shh, regardless if he goes to your, your rancher meeting, whatever it means he goes to is his business. There's freedom of religion here. It's not a religion. It's a CIA front from OSS. It doesn't mean anything. It has no relevance to reality. The reality is... No, this is the play. This is the real play here. Upstairs reality. People here, listen. China, Russia.
Then get out. Get out. Hey, Mayor, you got a gun? Look, look. Everybody who cares about 9-11, who cares about truth, cares about Les and me and Luke and people doing things here, you don't have to believe Nico or Les or anything. You guys do your own research, okay, if you think it's worthy enough to do research on it. Right? Make your own conclusions. That's you can put it. your ranch and CIA in a search engine and see if anything comes up that you think is valid. If it, you do, bring it to our attention. If not, I see no reason to have it with each other. And, and you do what he would never do is get a book and read it and go meet and talk to people and give them an honest listen to and consideration. Are you okay. ready to book? Thank you. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. Yes. 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 Otherwise, you have no clue. Yes. 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 We have a very, very, I have a very important presentation. I have a very, very important presentation. This is about Homeland Security, folks. I am being indicted by Homeland Security. No charges, no rights, nothing. They can come and kill me at any minute. I'm probably the first of this type. Or probably me this time, the five people and ten people and thousands of people. On December 15th, I received a letter and a phone call saying I need to come in and answer some questions. And I was told it's being handled by the Bureau, New York State Bureau of Professional Regulation, since I'm a professional, I hold a license through the New York State Bureau of Professional Regulation. But it's through the CIA and Homeland <coughs> Security. And so I went in to answer, to see what this was about and what, what kind of questions they were asking me. And they said they had hearsay that I have guns in my car, that I'm homeless, I live in my car, that I have guns, and I have guns in my house where I live, which doesn't really add up there. They said I own a house in Pennsylvania where I have guns, and I supply guns to the Ku Klux Klan, and I supply sex to the Ku Klux Klan. And I said, and I said well, listen, you can search me, you can search my car, you can search my house here in New York. I never owned or lived in Pennsylvania. You can search every house in Pennsylvania. They refused to search me. That, Right there on the spot, when I was surprised about these charges, I wouldn't have time to clear my house or, or car out. They refused to search me. These are just ridiculous false charges. I wasn't allowed any charges in writing. I wasn't allowed anything in writing or, or specific charges. And I said, where do these charges come from? Uh, I said, is this hearsay or do you have a first-hand witness that saw me do this? And, uh, and they said it was hearsay. And I said, mm. well, if it's hearsay, you can't convict somebody on hearsay. And I said, oh, yes, we can. We're under Homeland Security now. The Bureau of Professional Regulation is under Homeland Security, and this is through Homeland Security. Okay. And I said, we are moving forward with your case. And I told them, I said, I demanded my rights. I said, I have a right to, I have a right to 15 elements of due process, specific charges, charges in writing, written testimony of these charges, to face the witness, 15 elements of due process. And they said, we're under Homeland Security. You're not entitled to any of that. Oh. And I, so I said, well, I guess, I said, is it Tom Weiss who said this? And they said, yeah, that's it. I don't know who it is. They really? said, yeah, that's it, Tom Weiss. I said, Tom Weiss is the Many people know who Tom Weiss is. Yeah. The guy who used to come here and disrupt the hell out of this meeting. Even worse also, than Nico. You know, attack anybody and everybody for being LaRouche. La uh, you know, connection, and now he's calling us neo Nazis, and he's doing what uh, this guy just did. You know, uh, you know, you're into the cultist and all this crap. And so he reported her to Homeland Security. Oh. It's a total malicious act, and uh, false charge. You know, for for, for you have a just to be, uh, you know, spiteful and vengeful to make trouble. No other reason. And. Uh, I said, I have one of my degrees, one of my many degrees is a degree in counseling. And I happen to know, and I said, I'm also a registered nurse. I have 14 years of college in health science. I said, I know, in my opinion, this guy has a diagnosis of schizophrenic manifested aggressiveness. I have uh, films of him screaming and yelling at meetings at 9-11 Truth at an Iraqi war protest. He screams and yells, like, schizophrenically, psychotically. I said, this person is not a credible witness. There is obviously something mentally wrong with him. I said there's been articles about him in the paper for stalking women. He stalks me, obviously. There's never been anything personal between him. I never had so much as one personal conversation with him. He just stalks me and screams and yells at me and 
9-11 truth meetings. And I saw there's been an article in the New York Times about him stalking up powerful women like Betsy Gottlieb. And I said, this is not a credible witness. I said, uh, you should dismiss this case. Of, you, you, this hearsay from him is not any kind of a case. And they said, don't you talk bad about him. We're not <coughs> prosecuting him. We're prosecuting you. Mm. And I said, I can show you these newspaper articles. I Xerox the copy of the newspaper article on him stalking Betsy Gottlieb that are saying that she's crazy. But, but, but Judith, you are a very vociferous activist against the government. Yeah, I, this, I, yeah. this, uh, I received this letter December 15th, just after I had written this paper on the, the corporate responsibility and uh, uh, com corporate control of the world and the heroes who stand up to the privatization of currency, Federal Reserve, and National and World Banks. And I demand unprivatization, nationalization of the Federal Reserve and the currency. Right. And uh, forfeiture, and also forfeiture of those who have received money, profited from defense contracts, and profited from uh, interest on the U.S. So, currency. you know, obviously they're using Tom I as an excuse to just because they don't like what you're promoting. Exactly, exactly. So they're using Tom as an excuse. I postulate here that they tried to find somebody to say something against me. From when I was in the Army, I know they said subversive infiltration is the main weapon. It's better than battlegrounds or guns, weapons, jails, of course, all they do is pay somebody $10,000 within a group to disrupt their group, and their group is harmless against uh, against the U.S. And I posh they look for something, they found Tom Weiss to say something against me, and uh, they're using this. And I know that, that something like that has to be true, because now, uh, in the second phone call they made to me, saying they're proceeding with the case but last week, they changed their story, saying, I don't own a house in State College, Pennsylvania. And they changed it to another town. And I said, well, did this Tom Weiss write you a second letter and change it? And they said, no, he didn't write a second letter. I said, then how did you change it from the house saying I own a house in Pennsylvania? And they got the address of a house I owned in Carbondale, Illinois. And I said, how did you get that address? And how did you change this? What here, who gave this must be a second person or a second round of hearsay? Where did you get this hearsay? And they said... And they refuse to answer that. So they're, they're updating their, their charges and twisting them around to something that sounds a little better. Mm. And Can I ask you a question? And just, sure. And, and so uh, they made it clear this is under Homeland Security. I'm not entitled to any rights. And I also noticed that in the emails and the independent media, they show that Congress has passed a law in the last week saying that they can send someone to the death penalty on hearsay. And so this, I, I, this might possibly be made for me because I also called, when I wrote this paper, I also called Bill Frist's office, uh, he's Senate, Republican Senate Majority Leader, and I told him this. I said, I demand that, uh, that the Federal Reserve be nationalized, unprivatized, and that there be forfeiture of everyone who has profited from it, from defense contracts, from privatization, interest on the currency, and anyone who received money from these people who profited. Uh, we demand forfeiture. And I said, Plato said 2,300 years ago that anything anybody says, uh, anything good is done is started out with one person. I said, I'm just one person saying this, but I hope other people will take up my cause. And Einstein said that, and I also quoted Aristotle said that if good men do nothing, I mean, Plato said if good men do nothing, uh, evil men will surely rule over them. I said, other, I hope other people will take up my cause. And so I postulated I'm doing this because of my paper and because of my phone call to Bill Frist office. And I know I wrote this paper showing that anyone who speaks out against the corporations that privatize national currency, they've either been killed or attempts on their life or, mm. or something major, character and career assassination on them. Are you working now? I'm still working as a registered nurse. Ten years ago, my degree to diagnose and prescribe medicine was pulled because I spoke out against drug dealers and because I witnessed the vote being fraudulated. Mm -hmm. Questions? When you had your hearing, did they allow other people to come in there with you, or did you have to go by yourself? I went by myself. No one would go with me. But would, would they have allowed other people to come with you? I don't know. That's important, because I'm going through something similar. And I, I know that if they can get you into a court or into any of these hearings by yourself, then they treat you a lot differently yeah. if, you, if you come in there with seven, eight, ten, yeah. twenty, thirty people. Yeah. But, don't go by so, but when you yeah. go again, don't you don't you don't need to go alone. 
You need to get as many people as you can get. Everybody turned against me like that. Well, call me. I'm coming. Call me. I'm coming. We need to go with you. I gave you my pay. Please call me. I will call you and give you my number. <laughs> they won't let me turn in any papers on my behalf. They say if I turn in papers to defend myself, I'm prosecuting this Tom Weiss who mailed in the hearsay. Don't and they won't let me turn in any papers to defend don't myself. Don't give them anything. Don't give them anything. Nope. Don't give them anything, but have anything. Basically, do you have weapons in your car? No. Okay, so that's the case against you. Yeah, he's close. He's saying that they and my hearing, they when, when I was speaking to them in the part. hearing, when I demanded my rights and said that I, I'm entitled to 15 elements of due process, yeah. uh, specific charges, uh, a regular witness and not just hearsay, they turned off the tape recorder. And when I wasn't speaking and they were questioning me, they turned it they back would, on. They would not do that if witness. That was, That's very important. Have a witness. Whenever you, anybody pick you up or tell you anything, go get you a witness. I actually, um, I hate to interrupt you, but I actually went to um, court um, supporting some of the Pakistani Americans that have just been picked up on trumped up charges and brought in and they're about to be deported. I mean, this woman was just picked up for no reason and they said, oh, because they wouldn't even tell her where she was picked up and they had her in court. They wouldn't let anyone else in there. Lynn Stewart was actually there. They wouldn't let Lynn Stewart in. Um, but we were outside supporting her. But sometimes they won't let you bring people in. It's unfortunate. But um, they finally told her the reason is because she got a phone call from someone in jail, and that's why they brought her in. And she should have paid $35,000 to be let free. I mean, it was outrageous. It's extortion. I want, to, I want to mention something else about the ideas of this 9-11 truth movement. We are investigative reporters and truth seekers and intelligent people that are concerned about what happened to our neighbors five years ago. And I've turned to my friends who have turned to the DVDs and stuff I've given them, they agree with me. And then months later they come back and say, oh, it couldn't have been an inside job. It been. Somehow I think the media has manipulated us yeah. through not only media control, but mind control. Yeah. And if you watch CNN, yes. you're like cheerleading war. Somehow they have these subtle manipulations. And when people read the New York Times or watch ABC News or CNN all the time, somehow there's subtle, like there's 30 frames per second. And, and then they just get, you know, mind washed into thinking, oh, it could it couldn't have been an inside job. You got to watch public access TV. Here, Joe Friendly's show, Democracy Now, my show with Salem Hill America. Shows that are real public access, C-SPAN. You can You got to turn off the TV, folks, because otherwise it's going to brainwash you. Unfortunately, I really think that's that's happening because they have a sophisticated machine. They got 400 billion dollars a year. The Pentagon. They, they're, their business is death and destruction. So mind control is part of their big budget, and they've sophisticated the controls, and they know what they're doing. And we're up against a tremendous monster here that's into killing and murder. That's what the Skull and Bones is about. They enjoy killing. They, they just they glorify it. And Bush is happy to kill people in Iraq and Afghanistan and in this country. I said in my papers, uh, when I was in the Army, they said, you don't have... All you have to do is pay someone ten thousand dollars to disrupt an organization. You don't have to take anybody to court. It saves a lot of time and money. And one thing I write in my papers is uh, the methods that this government is using, the subversive methods. They try to make everybody be alone, divided, fighting against each other, ignorant, afraid to speak. Like this gentleman back here said, "You're crazy if you speak." Yeah, the, the ignorant fall for that. You got to think for yourself. What is justice? What is right? You have to stick together. You have to speak up. And right. you can't let them divide you and make you feel you're ignorant and be afraid to speak. And that's uh, what I'm saying right here. I write these papers that are very concise and in layman's terms so that everybody can divide it. And I don't think they like me writing, no, writing these and it's trying to let people know what's going on. But in the beginning, this lady said this right. Don't speak alone. Well, that's what I've always done. Nobody at all. I told a lot of people. And one person from The Guardian in England made a phone call to him saying that he thinks I should be afforded rights. And so far, I last wrote a letter, that's the only two people who stood up for me, as far as I know. And Frank wrote I think Frank Morales wrote a letter for me, too. Well, do they have a timetable for you to go in again? Do you have a court date or something? No, no, I have no notice, no, no rights, no nothing. Nothing in writing, no rights. They can come and grab me, kill me, send me to Guantanamo, send me to one of the torture camps in Egypt or Chile. Well, don't attract that. Don't think about it. And you've got our number. If they call you or they have given you for questioning, call us. 
we'll come to you, rally to you. Yeah, event. honk the horn. Honk the horn and we'll come. Yeah, my phone call. You get their number. Honk the horn like they're telling you. Yeah. Do that. That's call us. Yeah, you have I our sent this out and recently, yes, yes they, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a Boston wrote me. There's all kinds of organizations in Boston. And a lot of people have put out high messages around the third list. I've had them try several times. And I got several calls times. from Australia, <laughs> Turkey, uh, uh, Iraqi soldiers saying, what are we fighting for if, if this is... Uh, if America doesn't have democracy, why are they fighting? Well, welcome to the club. You join the Pakistani community that's been devastated. There are people that are being arrested left, right, and center. The black community have been devastated. People are being arrested and thrown in jail, and there's torture going on. And Leonard Peltier and Mumia Jamal have been in jail for over 25 years now, unfairly. So we're in trouble. Leonard Peltier wasn't even in jail. The CIA stood up against them. He married an Indian and stood up against the oppression. Excuse me, you mentioned uh, Wise. How did he get in the picture? Apparently, I don't know. He just made a phone call against me. I've never had a personal conversation with him. They must have sent their operators out looking for someone who would say something and someone who was willing to write a letter against they gave him. him How Wise was this? He must have taken money to write a letter against me. That's what I postulate. I can't know for sure. But that sounds like a good explanation. I mean, he was here. Were you here at the same time yeah. that he... That well, for the past two years, I've been going to Iraqi war protests, 9-11 truth meetings, political rallies. And I'm quite a few of them there to harass me. Writing. And he tries to make it look like there is something between me and him. Believe me, there is there. I've never been had so much as a personal conversation with him. I make it a point not to associate with people who are liars, cheats, low integrity, and who do underhanded things. And also people who have, who I know have chances to take baths and don't take baths like him. He can't even take care of his teeth, let alone take care of business for homeland security. <laughs> well, that's a reach like that. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Right. Well, Make some phone numbers for your network. So, okay. so what happens to Mark then? Okay, folks, next week the program is going to be on spy chips, RFID. This is this technology, by the way. It's already in the passports. It's already in the passports. Yeah, in the passports. yeah that's what they do. They, they put it in so fast before you can even react to protest. And then the other issue here is they are deluging. They're assaulting us with so many things, one thing after the other. It's impossible to stay on top of it all. Okay? So, this, this is going to be a very important uh, program next week on spy chips. Um, the other issue is that in May of 2008, they will pass, already passed a law for a national ID card, which will contain a spy chip to have all the you know, information in it, in this chip. And it's very likely where they can trace you, your location, wherever you are. Yeah, you're always supposed to have it on your person, you need and it'll have all your ID and all your Social Security and all your stuff on it. Also, you'll need it to travel, and actually you'll need it for work, who knows, you know, but it's very, very ominous. So please bring people, please bring people that, that program. Then two weeks after that, it's going to be reported for the show, a uh, film called Who Killed the Electric Car? Which oh, is great. phenomenal because it shows the power of the oil lobby and the government uh, to, to conspire against the people. And this is, this is related to uh, the fact that 9-11 you know, cleared the way for wars against oil producing countries. So, so, right, we shouldn't. We, the, the electric car was working in California. It was selling. It was very popular. Uh, it was a completely feasible and successful product. And and uh, in this, these cars, they, they even had batteries that could go 300 miles, which is the same as a, a tank of gas. Right, and you just charge it. Charge it at your home. So that's. Two weeks from now, on the fourth. So Great, good idea. Right, the twenty. No, that's the twenty. The twenty eighth. Okay. So it's Sunday night. The march is on Saturday, so this is on Sunday night. So, thank you all. We hope you'll uh, help us with a donation in the basket to help us with our work.
Is Mark, is Mark on? Hi. Is Mark on? Mark? Big Mark? Oh, yeah. I saw him a few minutes ago. A few minutes ago? Okay, Urantia is a cult which created in the 50s on behalf of Tavistock, which is the biggest mind control institute in England, based on top psychological bullshit inspired by Sigmund Freud, who later created also pseudo psychological cults. So Tavistock is held as a Nazi creating the OSS, but the Urantia at the same time. Including MK Ultra. MK Ultra was also used in Urantia. Google MK Ultra. I think it's a hoax, by the way. MK Ultra is a stupid word. Just for brainwashing the mind. And I don't even know how it works, and I don't want to know how it works. Once you know how it works, you're getting upset. Why are you accusing us of being a Urantia mind controlled uh, student? Because he's, a, he's oppressing three major evidence in this movement. It's TV fakery, which you don't want to believe, but there's a fact. And it's the fact that the buildings were not pulverized by conventional explosives, massive and exotic weaponry, including as a suspect direct energy weapon, but a lot of more. I'm not saying this is a suspect number one, but I'm saying it's one of the potential weaponry which have been used. It might have been used also Tesla weapons, scalar. But that's not TV weapons. fakery. So that's don't, not TV why fakery. call that's that TV the fakery? The evidence number two he's oppressing together with all these people you see over there. They're brainwashing this movement since what five about years. Thermite? That's, that's, uh, thermite might have been used, but maybe just as a con uh, controlled cleanup. Jones obtained the evidence uh, after it was manipulated for Mike Berger, one of the uh, Thermite Man 2 speakers. The Thermite didn't even come live from the. Uh, from, from, uh, it came from an apartment from Janet McKinley and could have been manipulated. Even if they used that sample, even if it was not manipulated and authentic, it cannot pulverize two buildings completely. It must have been something else. And then he's not addressing that the main leaders at the top actually supported of Star Wars, exotic weapons. But did you see a DVD where the turn light was flowing right out? If you see Nine of Mysteries that come, they also argue that the bathtub uh, was at one point not destroyed or whatever. It was very, I mean, they go, uh, Judy Wood paper, I don't, I'm not 100% support of Judy Wood because she's a little bit uh, bodyguardish also. But she can also prove uh, in her paper that it must have been possibly direct energy weapons. Not necessarily from space because that's, they're using that meme to belittle it. It could come from Building 7. They're using direct energy weapons in Iraq but then, uh, and everywhere. It's already modified direct energy weapons. There's anti-matter weapons around. You can, you can Wikipedia it. It's already described. Raytheon has direct energy weapons. What they have right now is just advanced and what they had already in the 90s. Well, wait a second. Let me ask you a question. If you, you don't like Les and no, you're, it's not you're like accusing not him of being like. some sort of disinformation or mind control stooge. And what he's doing is... I just is say what it's about. He's addressing evidence. Tea fakery, exotic weaponry use on 9-11, anti-infiltration of the movement at the top of Bowman. No, he's not suppressing evidence. He is working with the consensus no, no, of the Bob majority. Bowman, Bob Bowman is not talking about exotic weaponry as evidence. But wait a second. No, no, Nico, listen carefully. He, he is, he is li sh listen to me a second. He, he is supporting Webster Tarpley, David Ray Griffin, and standard 9-11 people that no, are trying to get... not David Ray Griffin's a Rockefeller associate. It was at two or three Rockefeller meetings in the 80s and 90s. David so what? David Ray Griffin has oh, good so information. Okay. No, he has not. He's stealing from our from 2002, from 2006. That's also not a problem. The problem is David Ray Griffin supports one world government, Backed up by CFR, Associate Richard Clark. It's in his own book, One World Government. Cross, he's a multiple cultures. He runs another cult in China, Pantheism cult. It's inspired by Waco, Alfred North White. You can look it up, Alfred North well, White. All of that is theoretical stuff no. that may Listen, evolve send, after no, no, the 9 11 no. truth they're breaks. Sending, but let's, sending, cross, it, let's cross the bridge when we you come to the water. You don't know your history. That's like Kansas. We got let, me let me just say to you let's cross the water when we come to the bridge. Right now, the objective is to break open 9-11 truth. It will not happen, okay? I'm not giving the pessimist 9-11 truth must break Where? open. How does it break? Which by, reality will break? By people that have credible... No, these are all books out there. They're stealing research. Never did their own research. Yeah. They're stealing research? Well, I created a science group. This was done by 2002, and they're delaying it. And then when they finally okayed some of it, they're delaying it again. Yeah. Well, wait a second. When you... Because the media is controlled. When you... But this is a 9-11 scholar's truth movement. When people learn about stuff, you know, they share information. You know what and I it's no longer 
of us stealing you anything. Know, you know it runs, just communicated you know what we feel. Run, do you know who runs Nanam Skolas? So, Who's running Nanam Skolas? I'm not sure I know everything. Yes, All I know is know. that you are being no. very belligerent. No, you don't know anything. Nanam Skolas is you run by, a, by an you are attorney. Being, you are being belligerent and accusing people of you stealing evidence. You don't even talk. No, plagiarizing is not stealing. No, we're not plagiarizing anything. You don't, we're just communicating. No, they plagiarize. I had no, no. it done by 2002, and it's not about plagiarizing. It's about who's running Nanam Skolas, and you don't even know. This, it's an intellectual property attorney. You don't know his name. Well, excuse me. These are no, all no, different You books. have to do your research. Do you know what research who on is what? Alexander Flom? Who is Alexander Flom? <laughs> this doesn't mean anything. He what? runs the Nam Scholars. The people that you believe in. He's an intellectual property who bought the domain SD911 and he fucked up Fetzer. He, he did it for Jones. Jones is no fucking Fetzer. Are you a supporter of Jim Fetzer? By the way, I'm not, but are you a supporter of Jim Fetzer? I don't even know who you're talking about. All Jim I know Fetzer, is that it doesn't... doesn't... Jim Fetzer. So Jim what? Fetzer was the so owner. what? Jim Fetzer was founding Nam Scholars. He's a founder of Nam Scholars, the group you're supporting. You don't even know the founder. You yeah, want to talk with well, me? Okay, fuck you, man. Well, I would appreciate it if you'd stop saying fuck you and stop yelling and being angry and belligerent. And You're taking turns. Five years censorship, and I should not get angry. I get five years censorship by assholes like these. You, you don't, you don't group. play fair. You yeah, don't play fair. My, uh, this is my fucking group because I found it in 2004, okay? Dickhead. It's my group. I found it in 2003. Oh, you, yeah. you have to have respect because this helped me. Why? You and me, okay? He's a so fucking why, why, do, why do you why claim so to be up. in charge? This is a group that's going to infiltrate my fucking group and I don't want to have it back. I'm just telling you, you have to have oh, fucking God. respect. It's 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 all I created this fucking group in 2003. You look it up in the history. My group, I co founded it. Two thousand three. It's your group. New York, nine two. So I got into shape by Nick Levin. Why Levitt. are you being asked to leave by everyone in it? I left it by myself. Well, you're, okay. not, you're here. I screaming. left in two thousand four because I got into shape by Nick Levin. That makes us protest. And then it's not the case. People need to stop. They need to stop because they're going to protest. I'm not. Nobody wants coming as a visitor. So then, don't then visit. And be nice. Make your research about Nam Scholars. Google Alex Attorney Flom. He created the group. Frank did no fat, sir. Frank did no <laughs> fat. Problem there. You, you're not even a constitutionalist. Who founded the United States of America? You know that? How many people think that Nico doesn't play fair when it takes when it's a matter of taking turns talking? I'm supporting this flag here. I'm a constitutionalist. You nothing. You betraying the United States by listening to fuckheads like this fascist. Who's fucking up the people here? Good hearted people. Name calling, name calling. That person yell. Just be polite. People run an evil organization called Urantia. Why don't you, why don't you save your anger for Dick Cheney and George Bush? You know what? Your anger would be good channeled toward the perpetrators of 9-11. Your anger is not appreciated here. The people who are trying to get the truth out are interested in being angry at the criminals, not at, at the people. People that are trying to get the truth out. So everything you're saying is creating problems. Thank you. And you should know that because the Baker Hamilton report and Cheney are totally opposed right now on Iraq and Middle East policy. Well, that's script. That's on purpose. James Baker is giving no, China technology. No, no. Schultz runs Cheney. Schultz oh, created. Schultz runs also the far government. You know who Schultz's best friend is? Schultz's best friend is actually the guy who's these are the so sinner, these are, wait, wait, buddy. Come on, calm, calm down. These are the cynicist bankers. And you gotta, you gotta you're just right? calm down because well, they, they we're, the, we're the people who. I'm not far away. From your point, so that's where the people who exposed Tavistock, my friend. Do you know Tavistock? We exposed it in '73. We, 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 Ah, the Rouge, yeah, yeah, go ahead. So before you start, before you start, you know, before you start. La Rouge has their own card. You, you run, uh, La Rouge has their own card, yeah, and, they don't and you don't have a card? Them. No, I have no card. If I had one, I would destroy it behind that car. Yeah, where are they? I said I don't have cards. I would have them would destroy it. Cards suck, okay? United right. States so is betrayed by fucking Nazi cards. Since the 50s, the Nazis, the yeah, but who, who do you work even the Rouge worked that. I work for myself, okay? I don't want to have fucking Rouge behind me. Who you fucking cop have you believe in Nazi fascists? Who do you work for? The Rouge is a four. I work for myself. Who do you work for? Nico Hoff, that's my boss. Nico Hoff, it's me, no, okay? No. You work for the Rouge, you fucking cult head. You fucking cult head. 
Don't, don't attack the Rouge unless you have something to hide, my friend. The Rouge is a fucking fuckhead. He created Star Wars in 1984. I know he did. He created the Star Wars and we're very proud of it. Yes, and that your product, China, used killer satellites this week because you're fuckhead. I think I'm not going to be that. Oh, you're a betrayer of the United States, you fucking fuckhead, you hear? No, no violence. Okay, okay, no violence. Don't talk about this. No violence. No violence. No violence. We don't want violence. This is the wild guy. He's supporting Star Wars. Please, please. We don't like violence. This is a church. This is a church. We don't want you. We don't want you. You have to go. You're not even talking. 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 You're not even
to say here are legal, actionable grounds for uh, investigation. These are far more than necessary to warrant a true investigation. That's the way the legal system works, and by being practical and pragmatic, we can get somewhere. Otherwise, then it's just a matter of, of stringing this out for another, you know, 40, 50 years, which is unacceptable. So that's what we're trying to avoid. I got all stuff set. People here have been trying to encourage me. It's difficult uh, because there's so many people against me. And they said, no, take heart. So I said, okay. All they have is the U.S. government, the CIA, the FBI, the military industrialist complex, the Bush regime, the corporations. They're going to need a lot more than they get me. Good. Okay. That's my last episode. I stand up for justice anyway. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, I, gave, I gave him the info. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'll show you this coat and the light. This is a ten thousand dollar coat here. It is one hundred percent cashmere Ralph Lauren. Here's a bag that's in the safe door with no traps on it. Who would like to have twice on it?